This is a podcast for AP Chemistry Unit 1, or Big Idea 1, Topic 1E, Conservation of Atoms and Mass. We've seen how the law of conservation of mass is a crucial and fundamental part of chemistry. So in, a in the AP course, you will be expected to relate this idea in terms of symbolic representations, like equations, and in terms of particulate representations, or drawings. You will also be expected to perform calculations involving moles and masses in order to analyze experimental data. So the law of conservation of mass basically says the mass you start with is the mass you should finish with. So here's a task. It says solid carbon is known to react with oxygen to reduce carbon dioxide. If a mass of 1.2 grams of carbon is burned in oxygen to produce 4.4 grams of carbon dioxide, how many grams of oxygen is reacted with the carbon? You don't have to do any grams or moles or anything like that. If you end with 4.4 grams, you should have started with 4.4 grams over here. So if you have 1.2 grams here and 4.4 grams there, you just go 4.4 minus 1.2. And you get 2.8, 2.8, let me say, is more cracked up than anything else. You get 3.2 grams of oxygen gas. So essentially those two added up must equal that. You could have done stoichiometry with moles and stuff like that. So here's another thing that's a kind of a particulate drawing. So which, if any, of the following representations of hydrogen gas burning in oxygen gas to form water accurately express the law of conservation of mass? In each case, explain your answer. So we're talking about hydrogen gas, so H2, burning with oxygen gas, which is O2, to form water. H2O. Now, if we were to balance this thing, that's a 2 there. We have two H's and two H's, two O's, so we need to put a 2 here to give two O's. 2 times 2 is 4, so we have four H's, so now we need a 2 here. So it's a 2 to 1 to 2. So we look at this first one. Is it balanced? Does it represent conservation of mass? It is a 1, 1, 1, so that is not an accurate expression. And this next one has a 1, a 2, a 2, and that doesn't reflect what happens here, so that's not an accurate reflection or expression. This next one, though, goes 2, 1, 2, just like that. So I would say it's a good representation of hydrogen burning and oxygen to make water. Now this next one's a little bit different. They split up two hydrogen atoms plus oxygen to make two waters. And I think you can do that because that two there just simply means you have two separate hydrogen atoms plus one oxygen atom or molecule to make a water molecule than another water molecule. So now we have to look at these pictures. These pictures are a little bit crazy manazy. Uh, I assume that these are the hydrogens. So you have one set of hydrogens, another set of hydrogens, and an oxygen to make one water. That is not accurate because we said it was a 2, a 1, and a 2. You would need two waters over here for that to be accurate. And now if we look at this one, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 sets of hydrogen and 2 sets of oxygen, which it could be true if we had a 4 of these and 2 of those because it is a 2 to 1 ratio. Let's look how many we get over here. 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 waters. It's the right ratio. It just needs to be reduced. That would be my take on letter F. F is correct, but it's not as reduced as it could be. So chemical equations, molar ratios, analysis, and then analytes. The calculation and use of moles are enormous importance are of enormous importance in chemistry, since if we know the number of moles of a substance that is present in a reaction, and we know a balanced chemical equation, example, we know the reactive mole ratio, it is possible to calculate the moles of another substance present in the equation. So use this method. Write a correct and balanced equation. Find the number of moles present by using a mole relationship for one substance. Use the stoichiometric coefficients, so the coefficients in front of the compounds or atoms that you have there, and the balanced equation to find the reaction ratio of moles. 
Use this relationship to find the moles, the number of moles of the unknown substance. Reapply a moles relationship for the unknown substance. So the stoichiometric coefficients are the numbers that are used to balance the chemical equation and provide the reacting ratio of the moles of a substance. In essence, it's stoichiometry. Gravimetric analysis and moles. Gravimetric analysis involves the addition of a substance to an aqueous solution. Example one, where water is the solvent. That causes the formation of a solid or a precipitate. The substance that is added is specifically chosen to react with analyte, the species that's undergoing analysis. For example, addition of silver ions to a solution that contains chloride ions will result in the formation of a precipitate of silver chloride, according to the balanced equation below. So we have our uh, chloride ions and our silver ions, and they make silver chloride as a precipitate. So when no more precipitate forms, we can be confident that the analyte, the chloride ions, has been totally consumed, and this is the point at which the stoichiometric molar ratio has been achieved. After their formation, such solids are usually removed from solution by filtering, washing, and drying. Volumetric analysis, or titrations and moles. Chemical reactions are often carried out between substances that are in solution, dissolved in a solvent, usually water. The concentration of a solution can be measured in terms of the number of grams of solute, which is a solid, that has been dissolved in a particular volume of the solution, where water is usually the solvent, or more usually in terms of the number of moles of the solute in a particular volume of the solution. Typical units are moles per liters or mole inverse liters, and is referred to as molarity, capital letter M. So for example, a solution that has a concentration of 0 0.250 moles per liter has 0 0.250 moles of solute dissolved in one liter of solution and can be referred to as 0 0.250 molar. When concentration is measured in moles per liter and volume in liters, then for solutions, the moles equals the concentration times the volume. So titration is the name given to the experimental method of analysis that utilizes concentrations of solutions. As above, if we know a balanced chemical equation and can calculate the moles of one substance, then by ratio we will know the moles of another substance. And we can use that data to calculate an unknown concentration. As in gravimetric analysis, we need to use a substance that specifically reacts with the analyte. For example, addition of a solution of hydrochloric acid to a solution of sodium hydroxide will result in the formation of sodium chloride plus water, according to the equation below. So HCl plus NaOH is NaCl plus water. Unlike gravimetric analysis, there is no solid formed in this reaction. So we have to use another way of determining the analyte has been consumed and therefore the stoichiometric molar ratio has been achieved. We accomplish this by using an indicator that changes color at the equivalence point, the point at which the stoichiometric molar ratio has been achieved. The observable, observable event that occurs at the equivalence point is called the endpoint. So hydroxides can be used to neutralize acids. It is found that an indicator changes colors at the precise moment that 44 milliliters of sodium hydroxide has been added to 25 milliliters of 2 molar HCl in a titration. Use these data to calculate the concentration of NaOH. So we said, probably need a better color here. Uh, so we have NaOH. Again, I'm writing with a mouse, not the best thing ever. Plus HCl and an acid plus a base, or in this case a, bla a base plus an acid, makes a salt. So we got knackle, table salt, plus water. And I believe this is all a one-to-one -one ratio. It really is an M1V1, M2V2 problem. So we gotta write down our numbers. The precise moment that 44 I'm going to leave off some of my digits here just because I'm writing with a mouse and it's so slow. So 44 milliliters of that has been added to 25 milliliters of this, and it's 2 molar. And sometimes I like to write the 2 molar as moles per liter. I got an extra L in there. So what we need to do is multiply those two numbers, but we have to put that first number in liters. 
So 25 milliliters, there's a thousand milliliters in one liter. So we're going to go 0 0.025 liters times two, that's a two, uh, moles per liter. And that equals 0 0.05 moles. So if we need 0 0.05 moles of HCl, and it's a one-to-one -one ratio, there's one of those for one of those, we must need exactly 0 0.05 moles of that for them to reach neutralization or the endpoint. So we want to find the concentration, and the concentration is molarity, which is moles divided by liters, so we'll take the point dot zero five moles, and we'll divide by the volume, but it can't be milliliters, it's got to be liters, so we'll go one, two, three, we'll move it over, so we have point zero four four liters. We'll do that in our calculator. 0 0.044. And it's about one point, how many sig figs can we have? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, three sig figs. One dot one four molar. So that's the concentration. So the concentration of the HCl must have been that also since it's a one to one ratio. And that's the end of Big Idea 1.